For over 30 years, the regime has used international terror in its struggle to spread Khomeini's revolution. When you look at Iranian government terrorism, what you understand is that from the very beginning of this regime, in January of 1979, they considered terrorism as a tool of policy. We know that Iran is the leading uh, sponsor and supporter of terrorism around the world. The Iranian regime has an endless number of proxy organizations, beginning with the big ones, such as uh, Hezbollah. Iran set up Hezbollah early on to have a cutout, somebody who could uh, independently carry out terrorist attacks with, quote, no fingerprints back to Tehran. Founded in the early 80s in Lebanon under the guidance of Ayatollah Khomeini, Hezbollah wasted little time before striking American installations. The day after this attack on the embassy here in Beirut, the death toll has continued to climb. It is believed that before the counting is over, more than 60 people will be found to have died, at least 16 of them Americans. Hezbollah's next attack would prove even more deadly, attacking multinational peacekeeping forces stationed in Beirut following Lebanon's civil war. At that point, this had been the largest non-nuclear explosion ever recorded. We worked for four days trying to find people who were buried, and then we continued to work just to find pieces of bodies, to put them together. Every piece of a body we wanted to bury and not just leave the bodies under the rubble. Their intention in attacking us in Beirut was to drive the United States out of Lebanon and ultimately out of the Middle East. Despite repeated proclamations that terrorists won't affect U.S. foreign policy, Muslim forces in Lebanon achieve their goal when Reagan withdraws all 1,400 Marines to the safety of offshore ships. When we pulled our troops out, we essentially sent a message to the Iranians, you win. We will respond to terrorism by retreating. It was a terrible message to send, and we've been paying the price for that ever since. You've got a whole series of hostage takings in the 1980s, you had attacks in the early 1990s, 1992, Buenos Aires against the Israeli embassy, 1994 against the Jewish Cultural Center in Buenos Aires, 1996 against Kobar Towers, 1998, Iran was involved with al-Qaeda and Hezbollah in the East Africa embassy bombings in Nairobi and Dar es Salaam. In the year 2000, Iran was involved with Hezbollah and al-Qaeda again against the USS Cole. You've got the attacks against Riyadh and so forth. We know from the 9-11 Commission report that Iran provided substantial material support to the hijackers who would launch the 9-11 attacks in the United States. There's clearly a direct connection between uh, the Iranian uh, petroleum and gas industry and its support for global terrorism. They send that money to Hamas in Gaza, and they send that money to Nasrallah of Lebanon. Hezbollah in Lebanon used to receive $300 million a year. After 2006, according to open sources, uh, they have been receiving close to $1 billion a year. They work with just about every Islamist terrorist group in the, in the world. More recently, Iran has supported militant actions against U.S. troops fighting in the region. Iran has not been... Uh, really very subtle about confronting us in Iraq. It is increasingly apparent to both coalition and Iraqi leaders that Iran, through the use of the Quds Force, seeks to turn the Iraqi special groups into a Hezbollah-like force to serve its interests and fight a proxy war against the Iraqi state and coalition forces in Iraq. Highly sophisticated weapons known as explosively formed penetrators or EFPs can be directly tied to Tehran. They are responsible for at least the deaths of 500 Americans and now they're moving them over to Afghanistan. Iran has gone beyond giving weapons to the Taliban. The Iranians are helping train Taliban fighters in the use of small arms and are doing some of that training inside Iran. When they provide training 
and equipment to people fighting us in Iraq and Afghanistan, you'd have to say that they are at war with us. Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini was the one who sparked the current wave of global Islamic terrorism through the Islamic Revolution of 1979. <laughs> Oh, yes, we got